Alright guys, this video is about flyer number 18, which uh, is apologetics on the Quran, and uh, apologists like David Wood and Jay Smith are very popular, um, and very good, um, and basically go through the, the Quran and the Bible, so that's exactly what I've done here. I've got some of this information from the First Fruit booklet. Um, some of it from that book so what I've done here is I've taken the third surah verse 3 and you can read it there it says that he who has bestowed from on high the Torah and the gospel you see now the big dispute about what the true gospel is and what the true Torah is the Muslims debate what the true Torah is against the Jews and the Muslims debate against what the true gospel is against the Christians so this is really to um, put them in their place really with regards to what the Word of God says we do use the Textus Receptus we believe that's the, the you know the oldest version that, that we have over 99% of the manuscripts um, lining up so we got to just uh, say that here and the first point that the Quran states is that Jesus was born of a virgin this is from Surah 19 the Surah of Miriam uh, obviously Mary verses 20-21 20, so this is talking about God giving her a son she's unchaste, she's a virgin um, and it's easy for God to do such a thing but later on um, the Quran sort of disputes this uh, Surah 930 the Quran cannot interpret this truth with the Bible now just to prove that the gospel aligns up with the rest of the Word of God there are scriptures within the Old Testament that actually line up with the Gospel. So this is about God having a son, Proverbs 30 verse 4. He's talking about ascending and descending from heaven. Only Jesus Christ did that. Um, hey pal. Sorry my dog's a little, I'm not sure what he's doing. What have you eaten pal? Okay. I don't know what he's doing. I think he's eating something. I hope he's not going to be sick. So it says, Who has bound the waters on a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? And so it's talking about that God has a son in the Torah. Okay. Um, and it does mention this in the Psalms as well. Um, if you go to Psalm 22, it's talking about separating the the garments of Jesus Christ which happened before he went to the cross and I don't think you know for those that don't think Jesus died on a cross there were literally millions of Jews who died on the cross okay so um, this was a standard practice for the Romans so uh, the Jehovah Witnesses try to say Jesus didn't die on a cross well the, the most important point is that he died but he did die like millions of other Jews died except the, the Roman soldier had to, to kill him um, and I'll show you in the Quran that it says that the, the God of the, the Quran or the writer of the Quran writes this into the Quran as well talks about Jesus death and resurrection which the Imams and the Muslims fail to pick up today okay it's very very important um, if you want to download this flyer I will leave a link below you'll see the link below under this flyer the second point is that Jesus is referred to as a word from God God's messenger and his word so it's really talking about God's word not just a word from God but his word in particular word of God that's from Surah 4 17 1 third Surah House of Imran <coughs> verse 40 
And as you can see, Jesus um, in, in John 8, 58, saying, Verily, before Abraham was, I am. So he's speaking about that he existed before Abraham, before actually Adam. You know, that uh, the, the Gospel of John and the rest of the Scriptures speak about the Word of God being the creator of the universe. Many Scriptures about that. And some some of these verses line up with the Quran. Jesus Christ <clears throat> emanated from the, the, the Spirit of God. It calls Jesus from a pure spirit. He's only one referred to in the Quran as a pure spirit from God the Creator. Okay. As from the second surah. Again, um just discussing who is Jesus, you know, he's not an angel. But he's, he's, you know, if, if God put his spirit into Miriam and God was the one who brought forth Jesus, then isn't God Jesus' father? Doesn't that just make logical sense? I mean, who else could he be? The only other option is that he's an angel and there's never been an angel born of a woman. Back in Genesis 6, there was fallen angels who slept with women, right? But there was never an angel born of a woman because the offspring of these angels were called Nephilim. In other words, they were angelic human hybrids. There's never a pure angel born of a woman, okay? But Jesus Christ is not an angel, as we see here referred to as the Word of God, born of a virgin, and a pure spirit from God. You're not going to get a pure spirit from the Lord that if it's a, a, if it's a fallen being. A fallen angel is not a pure spirit, okay? also referred to as the Messiah now the Messiah is a, a term for the anointed one they can only be one Messiah they can't be two Messiahs and if you're describing someone as the Messiah that's the highest accolade you can give to them like there's not no other ones after or before him that can take this title there's only one Messiah as the Jews some of the Jews shout um, I'm not sure if they mean it or not but they shout Messiah now and then when you talk to them about Jesus, it's all God kind of a son. You know, they refer back to this uh, ch old chestnut. But, you know, the Torah proves it, the Quran proves it, and the New Testament proves it. It's about time that Judaism and Islam fall into what their actual holy books teach, okay? Um, the Messiah, the son of Mary. Sorry about the quality there. God's messenger and his word that he committed to Mary, spirit from him. The Old Testament, Daniel 9.24, you can read that. And it says, made known the real identity of the Messiah. And then this is from Jeremiah. A righteous branch, a king, shall reign and prosper, execute judgment and justice in the earth. Okay, the throne of David. Well, you know, Jesus has a higher throne than, than David but he certainly will take that throne of David at his second coming which is to reign and rule over Israel and the entire earth you know Jesus Christ is the most exalted messenger in the Quran mentioned over 180 times more than Muhammad all right quite huge to realize these facts isn't it that um you know people are talking that if you um I'm not even criticizing the Quran. I'm actually teaching the Quran. This is what the Quran teaches. So I'm not actually I'm not actually arguing against what it teaches. I'm actually showing you word for word what it actually says. Okay? So like I'm not like Islamophobia or racist or nothing. Do you know what I'm saying? What what I'm saying is this is what the Quran actually says. Okay? Some of others, to one of them God spoke, others he raised to degrees, to Jesus the son of Mary, gave clear signs, strengthened him with uh, the Holy Spirit. Okay, so, some, some translations say Holy Inspiration, but, you know, it's like Holy Spirit. And he's the only messenger associated with this, the Spirit of, of, of the Lord. You've got to understand that. And if Muslims are so hypocritical to say is that God isn't a spirit, why, why don't they listen to what the Quran teaches? You know, it, it says that even God is a spirit in the Quran, okay? 
and there can only be one Messiah. Okay? And if 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 God Himself is Jesus' Father, then even the Quran teaches the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay? That's what it teaches. I mean the Quran tells us that Christ needed no one to teach him anything, not even how to speak. According to the Quran, he actually spoke in the cradle. I think there's some other scriptures that came along later in some of the Bible commentaries that say that as well. But indeed, um, I, I believe this is possible, that, that Jesus might, might have even spoken at a young age. If you read the book of uh, Joshua, it says that um, Moses, not Moses, sorry, Noah spoke in the cradle. So, yeah, so you're getting these. Obviously, Muslims agree that Jesus is an anointed messenger, and so is Noah. But also, the Bible describes Jesus as the the, the second um, Adam. Okay, but also Jesus describes his second coming, like the days of Noah as well. So it's like there's so many passages from the Bible that. Um, that Jesus himself f fulfills and will fulfill in the future because Jesus is that art that we all need to run into and be saved he's, he's the spiritual the Ruach Messiah the Ruach Messiah or um, Ruach Messiah Moshiach as, as the Jews speak about he is the one it's about time they and they will they will realize it at some point in the near future according to Romans 11 um, and then we hear, um, we read this out. Uh, third Surah, Imran. Lo, the angel said, O Mary, behold, God sends thee glad tidings, a word from him who shall become known as Christ Jesus, son of Mary. Again, great honor in this world and the life to come, as it says in Isaiah. You know, um, and shall be of those who are drawn near to God. You see, of those who are drawn near to God. So the Messiah not only saves souls through his Holy Spirit when when he's accepted as, as who he is, the Word of God, the Son of God. But when you do this, he, he draws you closer. He draws you near to God. He's the only messenger in the Quran that does this. The only one. <laughs> and the Bible also says, Who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord or being his counsellor has taught him knowledge or showed to him the way of understanding speaking about Jesus Christ of course exalted to God's right hand many many scriptures about that in, in the New Testament of course he's distinguished from all prophets being perfect and sinless again purity um, endowed with purity our prophet El Bukhari um, testifies for the perfection of Christ and his infallibility saying Satan pokes with his finger the side of every human at birth except Jesus the son of Mary when he went to poke him he poked the curtain um, Peter says but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in the last times for you again Daniel 9 talks about the Messiah dying but not for himself it's for you, for me to redeem us from this fallen world uh, he's distinguished as a creator Okay, there can only be one creator and that's God so that's why Christians obviously associate Jesus Christ with God, the word of God you know, in the beginning was God, the Word was with God, the Word was God, you see. So in the Quran you've got him making the likeness of a bird out of clay and breathing life into it. Now it doesn't mention that in the Bible, but I'm quite certain that most born again Christians believe that Jesus Christ played um, perhaps a, a huge part in the creation process in the Garden of Eden when he created the animals and the trees and the plants, everything um, through God's word, Jesus Christ he's known as a counsellor um, from Jesus Christ we get revelation, wisdom, the Torah and the Gospels 
A lot of Christians would say, okay, we'll, we'll, they'll argue about that. But Jesus Christ fulfilled the Torah and he didn't give a different Torah. Just as the a lot of Christians do today, they say the Torah is done away. And the Jews have a different interpretation of what the Torah is through the Mishnah and Gemara, which is their commentaries. If you really want to keep the Torah and have wisdom and know what the true good news is and get revelation, then you, you come to the Messiah. You come to Yeshua. Okay. Again, there's a scripture here from Isaiah 9, verse 6. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. For unto us a child is born. I mean, what? who else could this be speaking of? Come on. Jesus making miracles, did more miracles than any other prophet, certainly in the Quran. Uh, hallelujah. So these, this is just a verse from Matthew that confirms what the Quran already says. I'm not teaching anything different than the Quran already teaches, right? Here's, here's a surah from Surah 5. Jesus Christ alone could raise the dead with the words of his blessed mouth, and I will bring life to the dead. Hallelujah. Next point, authority with God. I was a witness over them while I remained among them, but when thou didst take me to thyself, thou um, wast thyself the watcher over them. Okay, so that's, again, Jesus speaking about when he goes up to heaven, he can send the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Name is Emmanuel, God with us. That's just what the Bible teaches, my friends. Whether it's Old or New Testaments, it's all there. There's so much in the Quran as well. Saying unto men, mercy from God. Okay. God's justice, holiness, condemned them to eternal perdition. For this reason, the only Savior I can offer eternal salvation to men, to be a mercy from God. That's what the Quran teaches in this, this verse, which is further up there. A mercy from God. I think it's up here. Um, we may appoint him a sign unto men and a mercy from us. A thing determined. That's what the Quran teaches. Again, I don't know what they've been teaching in the mosques these days, but I think move over, imams. I'm coming to teach the Quran to you. I'm coming to teach about Jesus Christ. I'm open to invitations. <laughs> A charge by the hour. Verse, uh, where are we? Surah 3, House of Imran. I will cause thee to die. This is God himself speaking to Jesus. I will cause thee to die. And they say, oh, Jesus didn't die. Jesus was taken up to heaven and somebody else was put in his place. Well, this is God. Now, would you call God a liar? I will cause thee to die, Jesus, and I will raise, raise thee to me, resurrection, and I will purify thee of those who believe not. Right? I will set thy followers above the unbelievers till the resurrection day. Okay? So this is speaking about Jesus' death and resurrection and the resurrection of the saints who believe in Jesus. Okay? Surah 19. 1533 is Jesus himself speaking so either you can call uh, Allah a liar or God a liar when he says I will cause thee to die to Jesus now you can see if you can cause Jesus a liar because if you believe Jesus was a prophet you got to believe what he prophesied so this is Jesus speaking blessed is the day Jesus is born blessed is the day he dies Blessed is the day he is resurrected from the dead. Okay. Again, from Luke 24, 7. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. Matthew 28, 6. He has risen from the dead as he said he would. Many, many scriptures about that. So the Quran itself coming into line with what the New Testament and the Old Testament teaches. Right here in front of you. Very easy to understand. And this is something else from the Hadath, talking about 
Jesus coming back to judge the earth. So if you don't know him as Savior, you will know him as the judge. Okay. This is again from El El Bukhari. I'm not sure what sect of um, Islam he belongs to, but he certainly um, saw Jesus probably in the correct light, or more in the correct light than, than what the, the, the Quran actually teaches. Okay. Um, so the Quran does teach that lying is a sin. Okay. So you can't call God. See, God can't sin. So according to the Quran, lying is a sin. So God would not lie when he's speaking about these things. All right. Um, this again is just an extension that I've gotten um, from online. So I've, I've given the people credit to those who to actually wrote this. But this is the Quran teaching Surah 2 about the Torah, Surah 4 about the Psalms, Surah 5 and Surah 3 about the Gospel, um, Surah 5, um, also in the, their footsteps we sent Jesus, the son of Mary, confirming the law that had come before him, confirming the law. So it's almost like the Quran teaches that, you know, the to it's the same Torah as the Muslims do, but it's, it's really not. So it shows you that um, Islam itself has... Uh, fallen into some kind of apostasy over the past 1400 years so it needs it needs to be revised again again you know I'm open for appointments at your local uh, mosque anytime to to actually teach what the Quran says we sent him the gospel therein was a guide and a light and a confirmation of the law that had come before him wholeheartedly agree with that 100% absolutely totally agree with what that says a guidance and a admonition to those who fear God or Allah okay great okay is any Muslim does any Muslims read the Quran I mean I've heard of like the when you try to talk to Roman Catholics about the Bible it's, it's uh, like pulling teeth but is any does anybody read the Quran any Muslims actually read it you know Isn't that amazing? So this is more, more goodies for for Muslims here. And again, they say, well, you know, we just have one God. We we practice mono monotheism. They know that um, Muhammad, uh, in certain circles and certain writings, that known as the satanic verses that he didn't teach monotheism that he said you, you should worship three goddesses and they help um, they help with your prayers right so you you have to worship goddesses and according to Islam you know you're kissing the Kaaba stone kissing idols and that's idolatry if you kiss a stone if you venerate anything above the creator who, who is a spirit um, as the Torah says right I mean, the Quran says you got to teach the Torah. Why? How about Exodus 20, the Ten Commandments? <clears throat> you know, do not make the likeness of anything in the heaven above, the earth below, or the sea beneath. Or bow down and worship it, or even kiss any objects. That's, that's idolatry, man. So, you know, is Islam staying clear of idols or is it just having a few idols one idol you know uh, Jesus Christ very much against idols very much against idols only Allah is equal to his word Allah equal to his spirit uh, only Allah can create now this is all true as we've read about Jesus so far Allah is om omniscient Allah is judge and ruler Allah is healer all true so far about Jesus his power over life and death speaks in parables can escape from our vision okay um, I should be worshipped okay um, okay so we've got Surah 38 72 speaking about bowing down to God's creation there as well um, only Allah can send messengers give them power thrown is upon the waters uh, 
parable. God is our provider. God is unique. God is eternal. Um, hence of Jesus' pre-existence. So obviously only God can pre-exist um, the world and, and the creation. Uh, mercy comes from Jesus as the Quran teaches. Uh, authority comes from God through Jesus, his son, um, and so on. Glory and only a servant shall prevail, as you just read there. Um, I will purify thee of those who believe not. I will set thy followers above the unbelievers till the resurrection day, speaking to Jesus Christ followers. Jesus Christ followers. I will set thy followers above the unbelievers. So everybody else. You see? So that's called God's favour. Okay. So we've got a conclusion here. Um, some scriptures are mentioned. Um, obviously... John 3.16 confirming that God loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life okay and we've got a few more scriptures down here I'll give you a couple of minutes to read them um, but please share this with your friends if you want to teach the Quran teach the Torah teach what the Bible says they're all teaching the same thing Jesus came to fulfill the Torah to die for the sins of his people was risen uh, uh, to God's right hand and is coming back to judge the earth that's basically the, all the holy books teach that and I will do one on the, the, the Vedas quite soon as well I hope you've enjoyed this video and you can share it may the Lord bless you